And it's something I hear all the time, people constantly asking um, about how do I grow? How does this scale? How do I clone myself, right? And yeah. what Michelle's talking about is those ideas. It's the principles of breaking out the really scary stuff that's in your head or that scary place or these ideas only exist to you about bridges and locations and dump sites and which equipment's got to go where and Mrs. Jones, all these notes and just this minutia, all the details that end up clogging up your effectiveness uh, because they're all beholden to you, right? And so the way in which you start to delegate and the way in which you start to grow is by building these systems and about thinking about how you can give someone those expectations and, and not, you know, just as we've talked about before, task dumping, just, okay, you're going to handle this now, right? Many of us are overwhelmed by giving estimates each day. And so that's what we're, we're doing 10, 12 hours a day. And we want to get a sales arborist, but we can't fathom the idea of organizing that. And so let's talk about some of the companies you've seen be able to scale and hire someone, bring in someone else that they could actually, you know, dispatch new work to and actually take mm -hmm. things off their plate, for God's sake, if they can, you know, organize these things out and, and think logically about the task they're going to do. And is this something that has to be done right now in this order? Or is this something I'm just going to the closest fire because that phone call happened to come into me? Yeah, well, it's interesting. We've seen a lot of internal um, movement up, right? We've seen a lot of uh, field guys or um, supervisors become salespeople. And it's interesting if you've got an arborist on staff and you can send really good images, you can send really good pictures, you can really pre qualify the site conditions and make sure that you understand what's going on. You can have a sales arborist not in that particular location in the field. They can actually be at an office or at a computer creating estimates and creating proposals based on just those field, uh, those field conditions. So we worked really well with a, co a company that decided very early on that if they were going to send the arborist who was the owner, they were going to charge a consulting fee. And nobody in their area was doing this, right? And it was like 75 bucks. And this was like, I mean, we went meeting after meeting, round after round, is this $75 of value? It's just so, and it was so interesting to watch the unlocking of just the value of that. And so the minute we said, Mrs. Jones, we wanna come see you so bad. We, we wanna come see your tree work. We wanna come see your landscape job we have two versions of what we can do. We can do a free quote, meaning we'll just get the measurements online or we'll send somebody to do a drive-by and they'll take pictures and we'll send you a free quote. But if you wanna meet with our arborist, that's a $75 consultation fee. But this person knows so much about this, that and the other. And we would sell that as an upgrade to the free version. And every single time they'd say, yeah, let's do it. And we would just, swipe the card every hour for another $75. And it was so nice because that little tiny bit of money every day built basically the job scope for a new individual, right? Because we were charging now for the owner's time. So then once we were charging, we were making just enough money to cover the salary of what a salesperson would be. We put a salesperson in that role and continued charging. So it, that, transition over for charging for estimates, I think was crucial in them being able to scale in a tree business that we worked for. Um, so that, that's a good one that I love, but that one, that was one of my favorites because they just, nobody believed it was going to work. They all thought the whole business was going to go down and it was so great to watch it be totally the opposite. Yeah, you know my feelings on charging for estimates. I, I've put together a couple of, of articles and things, and I always get a little blowback from it. Um, yeah. And it doesn't have to be an all or nothing sort of thing. And I think that yeah. logic of, again, recognizing your worth and giving the customer those options. We can take route yeah. one or route two. You know, which one's going to make more sense for you? Here's the justifications for both. But if I'm going to come out there and give you a comprehensive breakdown of this tree, it's, it's not going to be for free, right? If I go to the doctor and I have an issue, the you know, thing I'm going to, to go to is the specialist who I yeah. know is going to uh, charge me a lot of money, but I'm going to feel like my life is in, in their hands and it's going to be super, super powerful for me because I'm going to get the exact information I want. And I know that I've, you know, looking at a, a tree for my, my father who the, the, he wants to save it. It's like, we do not want to cut this thing down. We're trying to do everything in our power to save it now before it gets any worse. 
and trying to find someone to come out. And I, I said to the one company, I will pay you to come out and look at this. I want yeah. your 25 years of experience to tell us what we should be doing here. And it was like, oh, uh, well, I'm not sure if I, uh, okay, you know, just like not yeah. even in the realm of thinking instead of prioritizing that. Because that is a dream client, right? That is like the yeah. layup of all layups in terms of, um, you know, quality of, of, of a customer. So I know you have a similar experience about a tree company that you just hired.